Frontier City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Our special speaker today is Darren Mary from Key Visa and he will be here to tell you all about what's happening with visas for the state of play in Thailand and hopefully be able to answer all of your questions even though there might be some inconsistencies between one immigration department and the other we will do our best I'm sure Darren is a British expat with over 14 years experience as a visa consultant in Thailand I'm sure many of you know the key visa company is managed by Darren and considered by many as the foremost expert in Thai visa law. So, Darren, Darren, yes. it's all yours. You have to come up on stage. Okay. Here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Darren McGarry and I'm the owner of the Key Visa Company based at Big C South Patia. Okay. I've been a visa consultant in Thailand for just over 14 years. I landed in Thailand on Boxing Day 15 years ago. Uh, we work closely with most of the major immigration offices including Bangkok, Chambri, Rayong, and we also work with embassies fairly closely. It's only taken Ren roughly about two years to get me here on stage today, but I'm happy to be here to answer your questions and um, share my knowledge with you guys. As I know visas, visas are a terrible subject, you know, I keep guys awake at night wondering is this right, is that wrong, you know, you're reading forums, you're trying to work out yourself, you know, which, which, which bit's correct. Um, I've actually done 26 public talks on visa issues including at the other clubs also. I used to do the Scandinavian Expat Club many years ago. And I think it doesn't matter um, how many talks you do, it's always a difficult subject to talk about because it's so sensitive. Let's move on to some of the items that have been causing a bit of a nuisance recently. If you're a frequent traveller to Thailand and you like to come in through the airport, so on a boom, not across the land here now, we're talking about coming through the airport, the immigration deem that after you have actually done four trips into Thailand now in a year period, or you know, uh, the standard free visa on arrival for 30 days, they deem that's enough now. You know, that's enough for holidays. If you're going to come into Thailand after four trips, 30 days, you need to get a visa before you arrive. So you need to go to a Thai consulate and get a 60 day tourist or a three month non immigrant or something longer, if possible, yeah? Otherwise, you've got to get challenged. I mean, this is a new rule. I was at a meeting on Friday and we spoke about this. Um, you must also make sure that you are carrying money with you. This mainly goes for the tourists, not for the long stay people, okay? In the last month, I've seen, me alone, I've seen seven people not get deported but refused entry into Thailand. Now, the last one was an American kid. He was only 31, he'd been to Thailand five times on a 30-day visa. He actually went to Penang, got a 60-day tourist visa, come in. He only had 2,000 baht in his pocket, but he had his credit cards and his debit cards. Not enough. He said, well, I can go to the debit machine, I can, I can get more money. No. So they, they removed him, sent him back to the States. I know. But this is happening. I've got, I've got the information on the computer, you can look at it. You know, and it's, ha it's happening every single day. A lot of guys that are suffering as well are guys that work offshore. You know, the guys that do your 30 day rotors, they'll go work on the oil and gas, they'll come back, they'll go again, they'll come back. These guys are getting hammered as well. The problem that they've got and that we see is that they're not in Thailand long enough if they're under 50 to get a visa for taking care of a baby or married. So, this is the problem they've got. So if you've got any friends that are coming here as tourists and the frequent travellers, you make sure you tell them they have a minimum of 20,000 baht or equivalent in the pocket and they've got debit cards and credit cards to show. If they've also got some sort of booking to show where they might be staying or residing, that'll help as well. Now, the immigration seems to be targeting younger people. 
no disrespect. They seem to be going for the people that are 35 and under. Okay? Because they want to know what you're doing here. How can you afford to keep travelling to Thailand so many times? What are you doing? Are you working here? Are you bringing something in? Is it illegal? You know, so there's method in the madness, really. So what I do is, you know, <laughs> explain to you, to tell your friends to be careful. Um, if, you, if you're on a retirement visa or any sort of long stay visa, then you won't be challenged. You won't have any problems. You just come through as normal, you know. They were just talking about tourists. <laughs> now, if you're already in Thailand and you're on a 30 day visa and you think, right, okay, I want to stay a few months, you haven't got a visa, you haven't brought one with you. Now, in all the talks that I do, and some people in here you know me, I always say, don't just bring your suitcase, right? If you're planning on coming for two or three months, why come on a 30 day and then struggle when you're here? If you've got the option of going to a Thai consular, Go and get yourself a 60 day tourist visa, come in, you can extend that 30 days at the immigration, that will give you three months, okay? If you need longer, you can do a Cambodian visa run, or you can go to another Thai consulate and get a 60 day tourist visa. The rule is now that in a one year period, if you come into Thailand on a, on a free 30 day visa, a visa on arrival, you can only cross a land border twice. So that doesn't just count Cambodia that counts all land borders. So if you're crossing into Lao, Vientiane, that's cluster one. If you're crossing Cambodia, that's cluster two, that's it for the year. If you try and cross again, they won't let you through. They'll tell you to get back on the bus and go and sort a visa out. So, you know, please keep that in mind. Now, obviously, we're in, we started 2019, so now we it's a new year. It's all fresh now. So it's two, it's two runs. This year, that's it, two crossings. Again, people with long stay visas, multiple entry tourist visas, multiple non immigrant visas, it doesn't affect you. We're talking about the people that come on a free VOA 30 day at the airport, yeah? If you manage, as we know, one of the one of the major upsets at the moment is the pension letters, yeah? Um, before we go on to that, I just, I just want to explain a few things that are going on. Let's say, for argument's sake, you've got a pension letter now and you're working with your pension income and you're working with money in the bank to make the 800,000 baht for the year, okay? It's imperative that you make sure that the money that you've got in the bank has been in there three months. So let's say, for argument's sake, your income is 700,000 baht for the year and you've got 100,000 baht in your time bank to make up the 800 for the year for retirement. Then, if that 100,000 has not been in the bank for three months, they will turn you away. We had a British client only last week. Um, he went down to immigration with an income letter. He was only 7,000 baht short because of the exchange rate fluctuations. He got his letter a couple of months ago, you know, when he was 42, 43 baht. Now he's knocking down around the 40s. He was 7,000 baht short. So they said, let him get a bank statement. He went to the bank, it already preempted and put 800,000 baht in the bank, but it had only been in one month. And they refused him. That's it, for 7,000 baht, refused him. So he had everything to show, but nothing. If you have any long stay visa given you to by the uh, Thai immigration, then before you probably all know this, but I'm just going to refresh you. Before you leave the country, make sure you get a re entry permit. This is the number one reason why people lose the visa in Thailand is because they get a retirement visa, marriage visa, business visa, something happens, or they don't read underneath what it says on the visa, they don't get re-entry permit before they leave. Okay. Now, what's going to happen with that is you're going to leave, nobody's going to say anything, the officer doesn't care, you're going to come back in and get stamped 30 days, and then have to do everything again. You know, for the sake of getting it, just get it. I mean, most people are probably in this room when you renew your retirement visa, you will always probably get a single or a multiple re-entry permit at the same time, depending on what your plan is. Now, I think a lot of people come to Thailand and the responsible things that they should be taking into account, like health insurance, visa, stuff like that, because they're all giddy and playing at night and things, that all goes out of the mind, yeah? You know, like back home you're thinking about health insurance and house insurance and all this old stuff. And then when people come to Thailand, they don't care about stuff like that, yeah? They're too, they're too busy being a playboy again. So, 
you know, try and try and make sure that you get your, you know, your ducks in a row. Make sure you get everything right for get your retirement visa and for what is it, a thousand baht? Just get yourself a single re-entry permit so you don't forget. You understand that, yeah? Okay. Right. Let's move on to the biggest upset I've seen in my world well, since I've been working in this industry, which is the removal of the issuance of pension letters. Okay. Now there's. The reason I want to go on to this is because I want to explain it to you because I'm sure this is probably 99% of the questions that I get asked this morning. So I'm going to save you a little bit of time. Okay, as we know, the British, American, Australian and Danish embassies stopped issuing the letters. This had nothing to do with the immigration in Bangkok. It had nothing to do with them whatsoever. They were just happy to tick along and do what they normally do. What happened was, over six months ago, they had a big meeting, as they tend to do twice a year, um, in Chen Watanar, and what happened was, the officers just said, well, we've got two or three pension letters here that we know are fraudulent, or have been have obtained fraudulently, not given fraudulently, but people have took dodgy paperwork up there. When they took the letter into the immigration to renew the visa, immigration put them on the spot, they can't produce information, boom, that's it. So all they asked at the meeting, could the um, officers at the embassy, the consular officers, be a little bit more astute? Now, the, clear, the, sorry, the officers at the British embassy, who had actually only been there a year, so they really didn't know much about Thailand, and I worked very closely with these people, um, decided that they wasn't happy with the statement, and you know they've just come out of university and all this rubbish, they're only young people. They went back to the embassy, called London, London checked it out and said that as far as London was concerned, after 25 years of issuing letters, we didn't conform to Thai uh, legal, or, you know, the, the legal side of the, of the Thai um, immigration. So what actually happened was the Brits decided that, right, okay, we're gonna stop it. Americans hand in glove, they, they fell next, Australians next, and the Danish just went, no, nope, boom, that's it today, we've stopped. Do you know how many Danish people get pension letters a year? 8,500. They wasn't even given notice. They were given, well, that's it on the Friday, anybody who's already paid for a letter, we're going to send you money back. So what are they going to do? You know, what, what actually happened? I mean, I thought it was a joke at first when I got the email. I thought it was, I thought it was a prank because I couldn't work out what, what, the, what the problem really was. And, you know, looking back at it, I think what actually, what has actually happened with, with people maybe in Thailand is 10 years ago, when maybe when most of us got here, home oh we all had the 800,000 baht in the bank. So we didn't have any problems, you know, the, the, the pound was at 75 baht, nobody cared. You know, everyone had money, everybody was happy. And then all of a sudden the exchange rates took a dive and people thought, well, what we'll do is we'll spend that money, we'll, we'll move to the income room. Because I know that, because you could see the massive increase in letters, so you knew what people were doing. Um, and then, now, the problem is people haven't got the 800,000 baht to put back in the bank. And they can't confirm their income. So you've got pretty much thousands of people now in, in these areas and other areas who live all over Thailand, you know, that are having these problems. I'm not going to show me income. I haven't got the money to put in the bank. I mean, what, what, what do you say, you know? Um, apart from what, what's actually happening now, what are they doing about it? The embassies have just stopped there. They won't help you now. If anybody obtained a pension letter prior to the embassy stopping, then the service for, I'm sorry, the, uh, the letter will actually have a validity for six months from when you, when you got your letter. So if people are, let's say, on board a line for the six months and you got your letter, you know you can renew it a month early. So that'll, that'll you know, earn you another month as well. So you'll have, no proof, you'll have no problem with that. We've had no problem with anybody at the moment going in with pension letters they've already got in December and November, you know, to cover this problem. So yeah, there's nothing to worry about there. 
If you've got the 800,000 back in the bank on its own, that's been in the bank there three months, I've no problem. If, you've, if you get your annual visa using a visa company to facilitate the visa with every needs, okay, um, then it's business as normal. Nothing's changing. The hype that was spoke about, about the health insurance that they were supposed to bring in, it's not been passed through government, I found that out on Friday. So there's no reason to panic about health insurance on your retirement visa now. Okay, if you've got it anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? But some people just can't get it. Okay. Now, I think we're just going to have to get through 2019 the best we can. The people that are having problems with the visa. The immigration have stated that 2020, you might have read something on, on Thai visa about this, um, which I haven't got no problem with Thai visa. Unfortunately, I wish to get the facts right sometimes before putting stuff on forums because then I get 357 phone calls like within five minutes. You know, what's this shit I've on the internet? I'm not even ready myself. And so, but there's you know, nothing I can do about that, even though I advertise with them because I don't moderate it. But um, it's been suggested that from the 1st of January 2020, they are looking at accepting information on your pension. But what they want me to do is take 12 month statements to a Thai accountant and have a Thai accountant verify that the figures are correct. Voila! Another way to make money. But if it costs you a few thousand baht to get it verified, what did it's only the same as buying a pension letter? And it's probably easier, you know, and less aggravation. I'm sure. People like myself and the immigration will facilitate that in customs and stuff that we do anyway. Um, so, you know, what looks like a bad day, it's not a bad day. You know, you've got your own personal circumstances, but that's what people like us are there for. To, to stop you from having the sleepless nights and thinking, God, what am I going to do now? You know, maybe this year, people who worked off their income and they're going to be struggling a little bit, you know, until further notice, you know, we'll have to wait six months and see if things change, you know. So, I don't want you to go out of this room and have a sleepless night about your visa, because there's, there's nothing to worry about, you know. As I said, the immigration don't want you to go, they want you to be here. They're not making these decisions, or the people are making it. All right, they're a grumpy load of sod, yeah? But what's easy in Thailand? I went to renew my driving license last week. It took me seven hours. 470 people and three staff. I had to sit in a room for five hours training. You know, on this training video, the people opening the doors and the cars are oncoming and reversing into traffic. It's just mad. This place is mad. I mean, you, can, you can't get, I mean, just getting a ball cop changing your toilets and out a lung transplant. We know that, yeah. So, Doing your visa once a year is not a problem. Um, you know, I think I think now it's time to take question and answers because I could grab it all day. I could really go on all day about business visas, marriage visas, this, that, and the other. We just haven't got the time, and I'm sure you guys have got some questions. And I want to try and iron out any doubts that you've got before I leave. Yeah, because um, I want you to sleep good tonight. Because I know I am. Because now I'm still in bed this morning. This time, so. But like I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm an agent, okay? But there's also another 10 or 15 agents out there. So if you already use one, then just keep doing what you're doing, yeah? And don't... On visas for Thai people, uh, my girlfriend and I are going to uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, will she have a problem with the visa? And my second question is, I'd like to take her to America. And I think that that's a big problem. <coughs> oh, did I say Trump? A big problem. Uh, and um, I'm just wondering if you have any advice on Eastern Europe, which would be, um, uh, okay, Eastern Europe, and then America. Okay, Th these sort of questions are very difficult because everybody's got certain circumstances, okay? You know, just, the problem is with ties is they automatically think because they may got a visa that they're going to get one. They don't realize that everybody's circumstances are not the same. So if you've got, a, if you're, let's say you're 
partner, she's got the house in her name, she's got land, she's got visas to return. That's the main thing they're looking for, okay? So your Schengen visas, okay, are for Europe. Not a problem if she's got assets. If you live here with her full time, then you prove that, you show that, okay? You show obviously airline tickets, because you're not from that country. You show insurance already paid for, you get her, which is easy for a time, you get her a credit card that she can use overseas in case, it, God forbid, any problems with you. It's just little things like that, yeah? America, I stopped doing American visas about eight years ago. And the main reason I did was because nobody got them. Okay, when I, when I worked in Bangkok, everybody got them. And the main reason is because the Americans, 99% of the time, like to look at work. Okay. So when I was in Bangkok, the much respect, most of the girls, most of my applicants were working for blue chip companies, Fuji Xerox, you know, all your big, big, you know, your big insurance company, banks. America got no problem with that. But when you come to a seaside resort, again, no disrespect, a lot of the girls are poorer and they don't really have collateral, they, have, well, they used to have a job, but it's not the sort of job that the embassy can tell the embassy. So all they see is most of them have no assets, no, no job. Okay, they live with you, but I've seen guys, millionaires, but they don't look at you. America, they separate it. Sorry, they separate it. They just totally look at the applicant. So I will say to you, if assets, you've got a good chance. Without forgetting. That's what I'm saying. Should we come to you or should we just do this on our own? If she's got assets, I think you can do it on your own. But the American one, don't. I would get the European one first. Yes. And then that's yours, obviously, good luck when you're going for the American one, yeah? Just make sure you have a full itinerary. Good luck, yeah. Hi, uh, thanks for your talk, guys. They're very informative. My, my question is, I, uh, I've, I've got a pension which I proved to the United States Embassy and I've got my letter for 2019. Yes. How am I going to be able to prove my what are they going to look for in 2020 to prove my income? So you got, you got your letter for this year, so you're okay for this year, yeah? Okay, you're talking about 2020, yeah? Yeah, you can, you can get your information, uh, but you, do you normally supply information to the American Embassy? Or not? No, or do you just go in there and get your affidavit, yeah? You, you show up and you know, yeah. I, I know it works, yeah. I know. <laughs> Americans and Australians, I mean, no disrespect, been given away with murder for years. Okay. If you don't have an income... <coughs> I do have an income. If, if you do have an income, it's better to show um, bank statements, if you can, maybe 12 months. Statement from Social Security. And correct, Canada. correct. Uh, thank you, Darren. Uh, nice to hear from a plain speaking Northern Brit. <coughs> um, <coughs> Simple question for me, um, I came in on a single 60 day visa, um, which I, I did the same last year, okay. and then it's my intention in two weeks time, when the visa expires, to get a 30 day ex uh, extension of the immigration. Okay. Well, last year, um, I had all the correct documentation, I went the day before, but they sprung on me the fact that you needed um, a document from your landlord, I rent a condo, so I, I paid the fine for them, but I was there messing around for about four hours. Yeah. I've got all that sorted this year. Is there anything that you're aware of that um, is, is, has been introduced in the last few months for the 30-day visa? Okay, so you've already done your TM30. You've already done your proof of address, yeah? Yeah, I've got that okay. registered, yeah. You've done, and you've not been out of the country since? No. Then you're fine. Okay, thank yeah. you very much, sir. Okay, what a TM30 is, it's... It's an addition to the TM6 card. You know the card you fill in on the plane? Okay. What the immigration states, and it's been going on a year or so now, uh, that if you enter the country within two or three days, you're supposed to go down to immigration uh, with some sort of proof of where you stay in Thailand and report to them and let them know where, you, you know where you're living, where you're residing. They will then put a piece of paper in the back of your passport, smaller than a a 90 day report confirm. Now, Brian's laughing over there, I can see him. A lot of people get away with it. They go into immigration, 
they don't really say anything. But if, let's say, for right, say you go and do your 90 day report and they notice that it's not been done, they will find your 1600 baht or more and tell you to go away and get your get more proof of um, what you're saying. Because more people, when they do the 90 day report, they'll just go and get it back or get it out. They go in about two minutes. But the TM30 is a little bit more, they want to see proper you know, ownership of. If you rent the property, they want to see the owner's ownership of the uh, property. If you own it, they want to see your condo books or your house, you know, your house documents. So, if you haven't done it, then I would suggest maybe in the next few weeks. There's no real time scale because you're over anyway, and there's nothing to worry about. Just go to immigration with your documents showing where you stay. Just say, oh, I believe I need to do a TM30 report, and they'll just do it because they'll catch it at some stage. It's not a big deal, but they will catch you. Anyway, I have a three-year lease, so I've gone through the process. Do I have to redo that every year? You only have to do your TM30 if you leave the country okay. and you come back in, okay? As far as proof of income. Oh, sorry. As far as the proof of income. Okay. Because I'm from the U.S. Yes. Uh, for me to get a bank statement, it takes about 30 days. Okay. And that's just the mail getting here. It's very slow. Okay. But I have to show a full year? Yes, sir. Okay. And do I have to show anything other than my Social Security and my annuity? Well, you show what you want, though, as long as it reaches 65000 and above. So you don't have to show them everything, you just show them what, what will equate to 65,000 baht a month or more. <laughs> so what I do is basically ask the bank to show only my social security and only my pension. If that's enough, yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking, you know, I don't want to show them all the documents of what I spend money on. It's not their business. <laughs> Agreed. I have to thank you for your time. Yeah. Can I just start with saying, do, do people understand that TM30 that we're just talking about? Put your hands up if you don't. Yeah? I just want to get this TM30 thing cleared up first if I can. You know? I don't want that festering. Right? John? Hi. Uh, yeah, I just moved into an apartment in Jiangxian about two weeks ago. Yeah. I'm here on a currently on a uh, multiple entry six month visa. Okay. And when I, I rented from a person in a like a condo unit, and in the lobby of the condo unit, it said go to juristic office to uh, you know report that you're yeah, here. Where you're staying, yeah. Right. So I went in, and they said no, that's the landlord, the owner of the apartments responsibility so I asked them if they had done that and they said yes they've taken it to the Jurassic juristic office Jurassic. <laughs> what whatever I don't have any Scared form about a TM30 I have all I have is, is their verbal confirmation that they've done that am I supposed to have a slip in my passport they are supposed to take your passport down okay I did give them uh, copies of uh, I took a picture and, and, and sent it to the okay. landlord. Then again, it is the landlord's responsibility if you're staying in rented accommodation. Okay. So if they said they've done it, then he should pay the fine if they haven't. Okay. Um, now, the, the, the immigration got the weird and wonderful ways of working with people who rent condos and stuff like that. So I won't worry about it too much. Yeah. Are you planning on going to immigration, getting any sort of extensions or anything over the next six months? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at uh, turning my, my tourist visa into an OA and then going for a retirement extension. Then you'll know whether they've done it or not. Okay. <laughs> well, they won't say anything, they'll just say, look, you haven't reported your address. Don't pay the fine, go straight back to your people, let them pay it. Can I add something to that, Dan? Yeah. I lived at a place and rented it for no, no, two years plus. And I asked the manager, the owner, the master, they call me, who was an Irish chap, that he's got to go down and do his TM30. He said, he's not going to do it. Mm. He's, we, we, had, we had this problem when they first brought it out because obviously there's a lot of people here that, in Thailand 
specific killer in this room, but um, who buy property, rent property, don't pay any tax, don't pay anything, just get the money and stick it straight in the pocket. Now they're frightened to go into immigration in case they get any, you know, comebacks from the tax people. Okay, you know, or the immigration knocking on the door, why have you got no work permit? You know, you're taking, you're taking money when you've got no work permit, you've got no company. You should always have a copy of their passport and a copy of their ownership details. Because if you don't, who are you renting it off? Brian will tell you. I did a talk uh, about six months ago and there was, there was a flag died on an estate uh, on Soy Council or near me. And as soon as he died, they got rid of the body, he had no family. The ties next door went in, smashed the locks, changed the locks, okay, and rented it out for two years. Kept the money, yeah. Kept them, yeah. Very clever, very clever. So you, you need to know who you're paying your rent to. You know, let's say, for, let's say, God forbid, this guy's a drug dealer, or he's involved in call centres, or he's involved in all sorts of stuff, you know? And the police come to get the property back. You could be, you could be, you know, they, they could drag you into it some way. So always make sure you've got the details of the people that own the property that you're staying at. And if you say no, it's illegal. They can't say no. At the back here, please. Yeah, Darren, your comments with regard to a 10 year visa, retirement visa, as opposed to the one year retirement visa. I just see some advantages in the 10 year retirement visa. You, your comments are a bit more expensive. Is it difficult to do? Or, I mean, I mean, my advantage I see over the 10 year, you've got to be in the country, haven't you, to, to renew your one year visa. Once you've got the 10 year visa, you've got the, the grace period of of five years and then you got to renew it again. Just comments on that, please. Okay. I didn't actually speak about the 10 year uh, because I don't really like it, to be fair. Um, has anybody in here got a 10 year? No. Okay, the reason people don't bother with the 10 years is because the criteria is way, way too high with the health insurance and what you've got to show in the bank or income, blah, 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 blah. Now, it, you might not realise this, but you don't just show them a bank statement once and then they stamp you five years. You have to go every year and show them the bank statement. Yes, yeah. So they will stamp you, but they'll stamp you year on year on year. Okay, so yes, you have to be in the country. Yes, you have to do your 90 day report. Yes, you have to get re-entry permits before you leave. So there's no difference apart from the criteria is massive. And that's why in 140 people, nobody's got one. Because you don't need one. Just stick with the normal one that you've got. Yeah. It's like a residency permit, okay? People spend years trying to get a residency permit to live here. Well, I've been here so many years and I've paid tax and blah, blah, blah. And what you don't realise is that you have to go down to immigration and get it stamped every year. You have to get a re-entry permit before you leave. You have to do your 90 day report. So you go through all that hassle, you know, singing the King's Anthem and all this old shit in Bangkok, yeah? You still got to do the same work. The only difference is you don't have to show financial every year. You know, it's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth the aggro. Uh, my partner and I have a joint account, and it will soon be at eight hundred. Scary. It was scary. Uh, it will soon be at eight hundred thousand baht, which I hope to use as the income. Will the bank give me a letter showing that the eight hundred thousand baht is mine? And the reason I ask that is because I, I asked the IRS, uh, am I responsible for all the money in my foreign account since it's a joint account? And they said, yes, you are. Okay. In other words, if there's $15,000 in a joint account, they don't consider half of it belonging to the other person and half belonging to you. Since you have access to it, all of it is considered yours. So will they legally, if, if I have 800000 in a joint account, is that acceptable for a letter from the bank. Well, you mean for, to, for, me. for your retirement visa? Yeah, right. Okay. I can't comment on IRS stuff uh, because I don't understand it, but I can comment on this, that the money should be in your bank alone, in your name. So if it isn't, you need to make sure it is three months before. 
So we have a lot of clients who uh, have got joint accounts, but they also have an account in their own name. So what they do is they get the visa and transfer it back into the joint account in case anything happens to them. So the partner's got access to funds, yeah? And then three months before, they stuff it back into their own account. All right? Yeah, so just switch it. I really don't. Thank you, dear. Um, I'm sure you know that while well, anyway, our American Embassy has told us that immigration is going to be issuing a new police order supposed to be sometime in early January that's going to spell out all this, um, the rules and regulations regarding the income statements. And so I'm wondering if you've seen that or if you know what's going to be in it because there's still a lot of outstanding questions that people have. For example, we've been talking about bank statements. Well, does that mean the bank statement from your home country or does that mean it has to be deposited in the Thai bank? And it, um, if you have, for example, your 800000 or whatever amount in the Thai bank, it uh, has to be there three months before, but then can you spend off of that for the rest of the year, or does it need to stay in there the whole year? So I guess my question is, you know, have you seen that uh, new police order? Do you know what's, what those uh, questions are going to be answered in it? Okay. To, to answer um, three questions there. Okay, if you've got the 800,000 baht in the bank alone, and that's what you want to work with, then yeah, the idea is there, it's there to spend. But of course you can use the money, but you must make sure it's there three months before, you top it up three months before, yeah? Uh, this is in regards to uh, tourist visas. Do you need a, t do you need a TM30 uh, to come back into the country on a tourist visa? I have. Uh, a 60-day visa. I have uh, one of my friends went to uh, immigration and they charged him 1600 baht and said that he did not have some kind of uh, chip or uh, something in his uh, visa. I have another friend who uh, went to uh, Phnom Penh to pay $40 and get a 60-day visa to come back. They told him he had too many visas in his passport and they uh, didn't want to give him. That would have helped him to have 20,000 baht in his pocket. And am I required to get one of those TM30s if I want to go and try and get a 60-day uh, visa, pay $40 and fly back in with one of those. Okay. So you, your friend, they wouldn't give him a 60-day tourist visa where? In Phnom Penh? Yes. Not at the border? No, so that, obviously, the, the, the reason for that is because he's, he's got too many entries coming into Thailand, okay? As I said, what happened with that young guy from the States before? You know, he come in, they deemed he'd have too many visas. I mean, people go, one of the biggest uh, what we call visa run uh, areas is Lao in Vietnam. Now what normally happens with them is, let's say you go there for three or four 60 day tourist visas, then they will go. If they deem at Lao that you've had too many, they will still give you a visa, but they will stamp on it, don't come back again. Uh, the expat male on a retirement visa wants to bring in a lady and a child from another country, did they automatically fall under his retirement visa or does he have to marry the lady and then they fall under the retirement visa? <laughs> okay, good question. I'll tell you what you're making me out of work out this month. I'm not that warm yet. Obviously, are you going to put the child in school? Yeah. Okay. The, the child will, depending if, normally if it's an international school, the child will be given a, obviously an education visa, and then the mother of the child piggybacks on her visa, not on yours. It has to be a, a, a international school done on the A school, shall we say a school that can deal with immigration, yes. Not a government school. No, 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 no. Thank for the as, as, long, as long as you have the, the mother's um, the mother's birth certificate, passport, obviously linking with the child and yourself. 
Uh, the fact that you've already got a retirement visa is great. Um, the child will, you'll en enroll the child into school. They can, they don't normally make a child leave, so they will then convert the tourist visa, maybe better to get a 60 day before they come, tourist visa, convert that into an ED visa, and then from a three month ED to a one year. And then the mother of the child can piggyback as the, uh, as the mother, and the child's the dependent, yeah. But they, well, if you was married, it'd be easier, so she could piggyback on yours. Morning, Karen. Morning, uh, my question is, we've got visitors arriving this month yes. from the UK, and you're saying they have to bring so much cash with them. How much is that? Are they frequent travellers, then? No. No. I, I would say as long as they're carrying at least about £500. Or something is that per them. person? Per person, yes. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Can you clarify, please? Monthly deposits of sixty-five thousand or more into a Thai bank account. Does this negate the requirement of eight hundred thousand three months before your visa requirements need to be done? It's, it's either or. Either or. And Is there uh, a requirement for an ongoing ticket for current users of the retirement visa? If we go out, come back. When we come back, we have to have an ongoing ticket. No, we won't wait. Before you walk away, Darren, we have a significant appreciation for you for that wonderful information about immigration. And you can wake up tomorrow morning, you've got to do it all again. Just like the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah.